Now answering questions from prosecutors and a warning. Some of the testimony has been and will continue to be sexual in nature. Let's return to the live testimony at the State Court of Appeals. Yes, it does. And that that's the, the numbers, your numbers, 15719. And I think we went through on the chart that you had prepared. Um, 15764. You see that on the next page? Yes. And did you have any understanding about whether or not the, all the people within that were Duke lacrosse players? Um, I don't recall if we specifically at that meeting said they were or were not Duke lacrosse players. No, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean in terms of the meeting. I'm just asking in general, um, do you know whether or not the, the persons within uh, that parameter, the 15719, uh, through 15764, regardless of whether it was discussed at this meeting, do you know whether that's true? I think we assumed that they were lacrosse players. Okay. And then there's the next one there is a, a known blood sample from the alleged victim, Ms. Mangum. That's correct. And then there were two more, there were three more additional reference specimens, um, 15819, 15902, and 15903 from Gerald Johnson, Brian Taylor, and Matthew Murchison. Did you have any idea who those people were? Um, I think I, I think one of them is the boyfriend of Crystal Magnum. Um, I don't remember right now unless I look at the report to see who it was, but I, we had an idea that one of them was the boyfriend at the time. And would the numbering on those indicate to you whether or not those were specimens that you received after the initial set on, I think you said April 6th? I, I could infer that from the numbers knowing that the numbers correspond with the dates that we got those specimens in, yes. And you have, you had previously testified about a chart that you had prepared that we looked at initially that had, I think it's 237, that had the evidence items received on it? Yes. And can you tell from that chart when you received these additional reference specimens? If you look, it's on page 3 of 237. <coughs> Does that, I think he's put it up on the chart. Does that help you? Sure. Can you read that? Yeah. Um, and determine when you receive those additional reference specimens. Yeah. Is Gerald Johnson there indicated received on April 13, 2006? That's and, correct. And then uh, there's an entry there for both Brian Taylor and Matthew right. Murchison. On May 4th, we received us. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, you, you started saying that you went through the reports uh, at that May 12th meeting and you were at the results section. Uh, That's right. Then we, then we went through the results. Um, <coughs> and, and at this point, um, we were just, in going through the results, we're reiterating what we had already discussed when we reviewed the data. Uh, in, in either the previous two meetings or earlier in this meeting, um, explaining um, what the report said, um, how the results were displayed for each person, and what the conclusions were. Okay. So if you look at page five there, um, can you indicate to the panel what that, uh, what that's a result of, or what that indicated, starting with analysis one? Okay. On, starting with analysis one on page five, um, it shows the results of DNA analysis for David Evans um, and for the fingernails supplied by the SBI and Crystal Mangum. And it shows both the autosomal, meaning the overall DNA, and the Y chromosome DNA typing. Okay. And from, from that plot, you could, it, it identifies the matches uh, between David Evans and the fingernail and Crystal Mangum and the fingernail. And is there any, on that particular uh, um, item, is there, can you tell whether there's DNA from anybody other than Mr. Evans and Ms. Mangum? Yes. There is somebody else's DNA besides those two on there? You can tell that from this. It, um, just looking at the very first, if you look at the autosomal DNA, on the very, the very first location, it's D8, 
and you'll see that if you move over to the fingernail specimen, you'll see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six markers present. Okay. So without even um, looking any further at David Evans and Crystal Mangum, you know there has to be at least three individuals because each individual has two markers, as much as two markers. So there have to be three individuals in that mixture. <clears throat> so in, in addition to the, the, the victim and, and this fellow David Evans that match that mixture, um, there has to be at least one other person in there. Okay. And is it, can you, can you just explain to the panel, uh, just to make certain it's clear, in the, in the columns there on that left-hand side, what do the numbers in, in the columns represent generally? The column titled locus. Um, the column that says specimen 1523. Okay. And then down from there, generally, what does that, that first column show with well, regard to David Evans? Okay. Um, you recall the plots we put up before with, with the peaks and, and the numbers on them? Well, those, these numbers at each one of, so the D8 S1179 location was one of the locations on the plot, and, and the plot indicated numbers for the, what I termed at the time markers. So in this situation, at, at, at the D8 location, David Evans has an 11 and a 13 marker. One of those DNA markers he got from his mom, and one of those DNA markers he's gotten from his dad. Is that what you want me to do? Yes, and, and uh, in total, um, all the uh, markers in that first column, is that essentially Mr. Evans' um, DNA profile for him? Yes, if you go down that column, that would be what we call his DNA profile. Okay, and then do you, in order to determine whether you think there's a match, do you compare that with anything on this left-hand side to determine that? Well, sure. Um, what, what we would do then is, is look over to the, the evidence item. In this case, it was the um, uh, DNA extracted from a fingernail by the SBI lab. <clears throat> and we would look to see if the markers that David Evans has are included on the profile for that evidence item. And for, in this case, they, they are. This, this 1113 for the D8, S1179, you can see that on that same box for the evidence item, the DNA extracted by the fingernail, there is an 11 and there is a 13. In a mixture profile, what, it what that tells us when considering just that location that David Evans could be included in that mixture. Okay, because there, there is no markers or at any of the alleles at which that person has an inconsistent marker. Is that, am I asking that? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> but the reason but is because David Evans, it's very simple. The markers that David Evans has are included in the mixture. Okay. There, there are other markers there, but his are included among them. Okay. So he cannot be excluded. He could possibly be a person who contributed to that DNA. And so on this results page here, you have uh, DNA profiles for Mr. Evans and for Ms. Mangum, and then in the columns with respect to the fingernail, is that the DNA uh, that was actually found on those evidence items, the specific DNA? That's the DNA that we were able to identify on the DNA extracted by the FBI lab from a fingernail. Okay. And did, at that May 12th meeting, did you go through the results of this uh, with Mr. Nifong and the investigators? Yes. We went through the whole, just like we did just now. 